Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal, another new setting for you today. I'm sitting outside my lodge here at Elverham Forest Centre Parts. Uh, you've been enjoying my sofa for the last few days and I've been managing to record these videos, but now I've got, uh, yeah, outside because my kids are in there on the uh, on the sofa playing their iPads and it would have been just a little bit too loud to have them in. So if I get attacked by a squirrel or a random monk jack deer in the next 10 minutes or so, <laughs> that'll be why and I'm sure it'll make it pretty entertaining for you. Anyway, I hope everyone is well, you're enjoying your week. We're nearly at the weekend now. This is going out on Saturday morning. I am pre-recording this on uh, Friday afternoon because I'm out and about doing family stuff tomorrow morning with my kids so I wouldn't be able to record one but I wanted to get something ahead of the Aston Villa game huge game which shows you how out of the loop I've been in the last week or so because of this holiday that I was convinced it was a Saturday kickoff sort of Saturday 5.30 kickoff it wasn't until I checked all the comments from a video I did a couple of days ago and saw you guys all saying uh, the game's on Sunday that I checked and realised I was completely and utterly wrong so uh, yeah apologies for that but that's how out of the loop I am, brain not really switched on at the moment. But I wanted to talk about the game. Mikel's been giving his press conference today, on Friday, obviously yesterday, by the time you're watching or listening to this. Some interesting stuff from Mikel, certainly in terms of team news. I mean, it's a huge game for Arsenal. On the back of the buying game, you know, real energy sapping performance from Arsenal on Tuesday night, coming back from 2-1 down to get a draw, keep himself in the tie ahead of the second leg uh, next week in Munich on Wednesday. So... Yeah, real sort of emotional, draining, physical encounter with Bayern Munich. But Arsenal have to go again. They have to put that out of their minds and they have to go again because every single game is huge now. Mikel said in his press conference, look, Bayern's gone. It's all about Aston Villa now. And it is because if you if you think too much about what happened against Bayern on Tuesday or if you think too much about what might happen against Bayern this coming Wednesday, then suddenly the Villa game's going to go, you know, you're, you're going to lose your focus and suddenly you're going to drop points against Aston Villa. And then given how the title race is at the moment, it's pretty much title gone can't afford to be dropping points especially at home given the tricky away games Arsenal have got coming up so they've got to be bang on it and focus for tomorrow and Mikel was really sort of drilling that in when he was talking in his press conference at London Colney team news wise Gabriel missed a bit of training following the Bayern Munich game Mikel was asked about that and he said we've got one more day to prepare for the match and we'll see tomorrow if everybody is available. He's asked if there are any other sort of injury hangovers post Bayern of course we saw Bukaya Saka after that penalty incident limping off the pitch after whacking into Manuel Neuer. That was a big old collision, whether you see it, see it as Saka initiating that collision or Neuer initiating that collision. Whatever it is, put that argument to one side. It was a big old bang on the legs and uh, you could see Saka felt that as he was limping off. But he was asked uh, Mikel if there are any other sort of injury hangovers. He said, we have some, but hopefully with another day, we're going to be okay. And I imagine Arsenal are Arsenal in really good shape, physical, physically wise, going into this crucial run of games now and they would hope to have pretty much everyone available for the Villa game. And then it all depends on what Mikel's going to do. What is he thinking? Who are you going to play? Are you going to have Wednesday night game in your mind at all? Or are you going to play your strongest team? I think you've got to play your strongest team. Look, you're playing the team fourth in the Premier League on Saturday evening, who I was just reading in their last nine games in London have won eight and drawn one. I think they're unbeaten in nine games in London. You know, really good away side, really dangerous away from home because of the way they play, because of their counter-attacking prowess that they have with whether that be Ollie Watkins and his pace in behind, whether it be, um, I can't believe, Moussa Diaby um, or the other pacey wingers that they have, you know, they got possess a real threat on the counter-attack and that's why they're so good. And I picked up some really good results, one at Tottenham so well earlier on in the season, of course. So Aston Villa are going to be no pushovers. Arsenal can't really afford to rest players. And I think when you're playing Saturday night anyway, and then you've got your, you, you travel to Bayern, you've got the game on Wednesday night, I think that's enough. It's enough rest time to be able to go full strength in both games without really having to rotate, especially when you think the first leg up against Bayern was on Tuesday. So I don't think Mikel will make too many changes. Some interesting stuff on Urien Timber, who we still haven't seen. I mean, we've seen him training for a long, long time now, but we haven't seen him in action. I keep expecting every time I see the under-21s are playing a game to see Timber's name in there. It hasn't happened yet, but it seems like it's going to happen very, very soon. So when Mikel was asked, you know, when Urien might be fit again, he said he's still got a few steps to make. He needs to play a game, at least with the under-21s, and he's going to have an in-house game soon as well. He's done everything in training. Now it's getting that match fitness and having people around him to start competing in a full match, which is different to training. And what Urien Timber will bring, he said, hopefully a lot. Everything we've seen in training and in the time he was fit, I think he's going to have a big impact on the team. Um, 
And now look, we know about Tim, but we know how good he is. We saw what he did in pre-season, fantastic. Looked absolutely elite and such a shame what happened to him in terms of that injury. I, th I don't think, I'd be very surprised if we see him play for Arsenal between now and the end of the season in terms of the first team. I think when you've got, what, after after Saturday night's game, Sunday's game, what, six games left in the Premier League, I think at that point, in the middle of a title race with tricky games, you know, really big high intensity away games, including that, I just can't see you're going to throw a player in who's been injured and missed a whole season with such a serious injury as a cruciate injury. You know, we might well see him play under 21 football. It seems like we will. It seems like we're going to see him play a behind closed doors game pretty, pretty soon, which I imagine Arsenal will publicise after the event and show how he gets on because they'll make quite a big thing about it. But to throw him into Premier League or a Champions League potential semi-final or final, I just can't see it. So for me, as you know, maybe six weeks ago, I was expecting it could well happen. I I don't think so. And as I've said the whole time when it comes to your team, but anything you got out of him this season was a bonus. The key thing was just getting him fit and ready for pre-season so he can have a proper pre-season and be ready to go next season. I think the way things appear to be heading with Urien, in my mind anyway, I just think that's how it's going to be. I can't see him having an impact in the Premier League between now and the end of the season, especially when Arsenal have got everyone fit at the moment. So there's no need to try and rush him back and it would just be almost ne negligent I hate saying that word, to rush him back anyway. So, yeah, I thought it was interesting stuff on Timber and I'm really looking forward to seeing him play, but I think we'll have to wait till next season to see him really make an impact on the first team. Now, there was some interesting stuff on Jesus. So obviously, Jesus gave that interview recently where he said he can't remember the last time he played about pain and Mikel was asked about that and the kind of how you need to manage his minutes and how difficult that is. And he says, look, in elite sport, to play without pain is very difficult, especially at the level that we play. If you ask any player, they will say that sometimes there is pain and they have to deal with that. That makes you as well. And Gabby has the toughness and character that he always wants to overcome. He has overcome some difficulties in terms of injuries and he is ready again. And he's right. Obviously, the amount of people that I spoke to when I've interviewed footballers, and, um, you speak to them and you see them in training afterwards and they're always carrying knocks. It's very, very rare that you do not have some sort of injury when you're playing at elite sport. But just because of the demands you put on your, you, you put on, on your body, look at the training ground pictures now you'll see Ben White has got his knee heavily strapped all the time and he's been playing that and covering and playing through that all season and just like Gabriel Jesus has and just like lots of other players have um you know I'm convinced Jesus has got a big big part to play between now and the end of the season he showed that against Bayern Munich with his quality when he came on such a brilliant assist for Leandro Trossard and um you know I think there's a lot more moments like that between now and the end of the season that we'll see from Gabriel Jesus because he's just too good a player not to have an impact over the key stage of the season for Arsenal. Obviously, Aston Villa brings the classic Unai Emery uh, narrative to proceedings. Congratulations to Unai, by the way. I think he managed his 1,000th game in midweek for Aston Villa. Fantastic record for him. What a career he has had. Um, and he comes to Arsenal whenever Arsenal come up against Unai Emery. There's always a narrative, of course. And he's had some joy against Arsenal, certainly. With Villarreal, he obviously knocked Arsenal out of the Europa League when Arteta was in charge. They beat Arsenal earlier on this season at Villa Park. One of the few defeats Arsenal have suffered so far this season. Weird game, that one. Still felt Arsenal would be kicking themselves that they didn't get three points in that game, let alone none. Um, but it is what it is. Arsenal couldn't find a way back after that early Aston Villa goal. He was asked, you know, what's impressed you most about Aston Villa this season? And he said, what they've done since Unai came in, he's made a huge impact at the clubs in terms of performance and consistency. It's unbelievable what they're doing. They're still in European competition. They played last night. So it's really impressive with what they've done. Now, Villa arrived with Douglas Luiz, missing he's picked up um 10 yellow cards so he's going to be suspended for the arsenal game which is definitely a boost look really key play for arsenal interesting to see what villa do in terms of their team selection what unai does in terms of his team selection given they are in europe and they've got a big game coming up in the week just like arsenal have you know are you going to rotate we've seen before when unai Emery was in charge of arsenal he did it uh, when he had some big games in europa league to come prove costly for arsenal as well you go back to that crystal palace game that's 3-2 defeat after Arsenal were playing Napoli and uh, yeah he made those big big changes and it cost Arsenal you know will he do that again for Villa he made big changes ahead of the Manchester City game we'll wait and see what he does for Arsenal um, he's confirmed though Unai, Unai in terms of Villa yes they're without Douglas Luiz which is a bit of a shame for them but he says that Matty Cash and Clement Longley have both returned to training ahead of the game Cash missed the last four games um, 
with her hamstring problem and long lace suffered a small injury, that's a quote, small injury last week, was absent for the game against Brentford and the UA and the uh, Conference League against Lille on Thursday night. But it looks like both of those could well be involved against Arsenal. Mikel was asked, you know, on Villa having any players missing. He says, we always try to use things to our advantage. We don't know what they're going to do and that's nothing we can control. They won still last night and they are a really good side. So we know the danger and we know our strengths as well and we'll try to do what we have to do to win. Um, yeah, it's just a huge game. It really, really is absolutely massive. They all are. And it's what we want at this stage of the season. It'd be boring, wouldn't it, if Arsenal didn't have big games. We've had, had it in years gone by when you get to this stage of the season and it's just a... Yeah, it's almost a churn of getting through to the end of the campaign with very little to play for. Arsenal have got everything to play for right now. And they've just got to show, continue with this consistency. Yes, they sort of drop, drop points. They drew with Bayern in the Champions League, which was a disappointing result given the start they had and the momentum they took into the game. But it's not the worst result in the world. I don't think that's going to derail their season by any means. I mean, you look at what happened with Liverpool in midweek at home to... Um, Atlanta, what a result that was. I couldn't believe it when I looked and saw that. I didn't see anything in the game. I just flicked on and looked at the results. It was 3 0 at Anfield for Atlanta. Unbelievable. And given Liverpool obviously drew against Man United in disappointing fashion before that game, then lose 3 0 at home to Atlanta. You know, is that a sign of any wobble? We'll have to wait and see how they respond this weekend. But I think all eyes are going to be seeing, all eyes are certainly going to focus on Liverpool right now. You know, can they get over this little bit of a bump they've suddenly hit? at a crucial stage of the season. Uh, maybe similar to what happened at Arsenal last season. We'll have to wait and see. But um, yeah, Arsenal just need to keep winning, need to keep worrying about themselves. Top of the table, seven games to go. That's all you can do. You dream about being in a position like this. And fingers crossed, Arsenal can go and get the job done at the weekend. Obviously on Sunday, not on Saturday, like I said earlier on before. And that's it for me, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it and listening as well. Thank you. Um, I do appreciate it. Yes, a bit of shorter videos at the moment because of what's going on with me at the moment. But I will be back very, very soon. Flying out to Munich. I get back from here on Monday morning and then I, well, sorry, Monday evening. Then I fly out to Munich for the second leg on Tuesday morning. So, uh, yeah, can't wait for that huge week coming up for the Arsenal. Until then, everyone, have a fantastic day. Have a great start to your weekend. I'll speak to you very, very soon.